Hey everybody, it is May 4th, 2009. I am Sonic Sons, and I have a question for you. It goes like this. So tell me again, why are we entering the Giant's Forest? Because beyond it lies the Cave of No Return. Right. And we never want to go there because... Dude, weren't you paying attention to the old man who tipped us off? Just indulge me. Within the Cave of No Return lies the Armor of Invincibility. Wait, if it's a cave of no return, how does anyone else know what's inside of it? Well, where else would you suggest they put a mystical armor of invincibility? Alright, Chuckles, from now on, I pick the adventures. Phooey! <laughs> and for, that, for those of you who are entirely confused what I'm talking about, and I'm sure there must be a fair number of you, I just quoted the first comic from a long-running webcomic that happens to be one of my favorites called 8-Bit Theater which is found on a website called Nuclear Power, which has nothing at all to do with actual electrical energy generated by a nuclear process. It's just called Nuclear Power. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that was Black Mage conversing with Fighter. <laughs> um, and it's uh, a webcomic all set within the world of Final Fantasy I. If you ever heard of that, it's this long series of video games uh, way back in the day, there's a thing called Final Fantasy, and it's, well, spawned itself what is soon to be 13 official sequels, not to mention other side projects and things like that. Um, and our author of this webcomic, Mr. Brian Clevinger, Clevinger, Clevin, think about the internet, you never know how to pronounce stuff, I think it's Clevinger, would you, Clevinger, anyway. <laughs> um, has been this great little thing based on... Well, you know, some of the, the tropes from that game, and a lot of just general craziness. I don't know, he's got this way of coming up with a joke for any situation, because he's got all these characters uh, that have just such, I don't know, uh, um, mm, dynamic interactions between them. You know, you can just put any random two characters in a room together, they're going to have an interesting interaction somehow. You know, so there's Black Mage, or Black Mage, as I would like to pronounce his voice. Uh, who has a penchant for stabbing people and general violence and stuff against Fighter, <laughs> the lovable idiot who, despite getting stabbed multiple times, never seems to actually die. <laughs> um, later on, we meet with our uh, thief and our red mage, and there's white mage, the girl trying to heal people and attempts to be sane amongst all the craziness of everything. Um, you get to see, you know, all this random stuff. Well, it's generally based on the plot of the original game, but I haven't, I haven't really played the original game. I played, like, you know, half an hour of it once, and it's not necessary at all to know what that plot was uh, to understand things as you go. Basically, it involves a bunch of people getting involved in this very long, sort of madcap adventure deal, um, making up a lot of stuff along the way, all sorts of weirdness. This red mage with, like, his... He's always coming up with, like, incredibly complicated plans, you know, for whatever grim situation is, and they never work. And they always find even funnier ways of pointing that out. Just, like... Like, there's one where red mage is like, okay, guys, guys, I got a plan. Like, oh, please, a plan, or whatever. Who, yeah, their response was like, no, trust me, guys, this one is for the history books. And then just cuts to, like, 500 years in the future. Class, please open your digi textbooks on incredibly horrible plans to chapter 47... Red Mage attempts to escape from the whatever that situation was, I forgot. And some kid's like, oh man, Black... I mean, Red Mage. <laughs> Red Mage attempts to escape from this stuff, with Black Mage snickering on the sidelines, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, kid's like, oh man, Red Mage ruined the future. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, for the history books. Um... All sorts of things. The, the whole of reading this stuff out loud was inspired by how I eventually saw this stuff. It was a couple of Flash cartoons uh, based on the comic, based uh, actually word for word on the comic. They don't cover nearly the whole thing, but they, it's a nice place to get started. I'll probably put up links if I can find them. Uh, and certainly there's the print material, and like a the webcomic, it's all available for free. And it's around, it's around over a thousand comics long now. And... Uh, getting around near the end. I don't know exactly how close we are. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm considering going back and rereading the whole thing, just to refresh on all the classic scenarios, <laughs> which I could describe, but it would all be out of context. It would be a little hard, but anyway. <laughs> Great stuff, right? You want yourself some funny comics. Uh, Nuclear Power is the website, which has 8-bit theater, among a couple other things. So this guy, Atomic Robo, being his newest feature. Uh, it's good, internet, webcomic, funny stuff. 
Simple as that. Thanks for watching. See you later.